Now here's a great problem that combines a knowledge of vectors with a knowledge of coordinates, and I'm sure you'll find it's quite challenging. This is the problem. A is the point 2, 1, B is the point 8, 4, and C is the point 6, 6. Part A, calculate the vector AB. Part B, write an expression in terms of K for AB plus KBC. And C, the line BC is extended to a point D where AD is parallel to the y-axis. Find the value of K and the coordinates of D. Right, part A. The vector AB we're asked to find represents a journey from point A to point B. And this is obviously six units in the x direction and three units in the y direction. So the vector AB is six over three. And that part wasn't too difficult. Part B. Now we've just worked out the vector AB and in a similar way we can see that the vector BC must be minus two over two. So we can put this directly into AB plus KBC giving six over three plus K times minus two over two equals six minus two K over three plus two K. So now for the more difficult part, C. The line BC is extended to a point where AD is parallel to the y-axis, which means in simple terms that D must be directly above point A. Now, here's the clever bit. The high road from A to D is along the vector AB and then along vector BC, and then carry on a bit until you get to a point directly above A. And that's exactly what the vector AB plus KBC is. It means go from A to B, and then in the direction BC, but keep going until you have moved K times BC in that direction. But we know from our work in part B that this is equal to 6 minus 2k over 3 plus 2k. In other words, that vector is the low road, the direct route. But we can see that the vector from A directly to D is 0 over y, where y is the distance from A to D. So this means we can equate the two. We can write 6 minus 2k over 3 plus 2k is equal to 0 over y. Now please take a good look at that to make sure you've understood that step. And this gives us the simultaneous equations 6 minus 2k equals 0 and 3 plus 2k equals y. From the first equation, we get k equals 3, which is the answer to half of part C. And substituting this in the second equation gives y equals 9. But y is the vertical distance from A to D, and A has coordinates 2, 1, so the coordinates of point D must be 2, 10. And that's our final answer. So I'm sure now you will see what I mean about keeping coordinates separate from the vectors which represent journeys from one point to another. These questions are not particularly difficult in algebraic terms, but do require some very clear thinking. And as with all things, the more you practice, the easier they will become.